So now for the uh, willingness to pay survey, I was proposing to do the status and health of the Galiha was very important, but there was no information available. And as I said before, uh, in addition to the management, how it is managed, I inquired about what the current status of the health of the Galiha. And now this is a very qualitative assessment for this because uh, there is no quantitative uh, documents available. And based mainly on uh, discussions with dive schools, because as frequent divers, they can tell how the health has been changing uh, in the area. So just showing a list of the islands and resorts I went, actually, OK. Uh, and the last resorts, oops, sorry, Soneva Fushi, I didn't actually conduct the willingness to pay survey because uh, um, I, I was not allowed access, but I did manage to talk with the marine biologist to find out how about the health of the reef. So from uh, did some basic findings of these inquiries, so they said before there's no baseline for the health of the reef. And some observations from uh, the uh, dive schools, although it has been established as a protected area, since its establishment, uh, the health has been declining, and the number of marine mammals, especially pelagic fish, has decreased, and shark populations had de declined significantly. And according to the dive schools, this is because now as a protected area, uh, uh, fishing, shark fishing is not allowed, and there is opportunity for more sharks to be there. But if, say, someone from the dive boat, a local sees sharks, they, he would call his fish, fishermen friends, and they would come and illegally fish. So there is this kind of, and uh, here, that's an, uh, it shows that although if you have an MPA without having uh, a warden, so if you, you need to have a mechanism to enforce the reg regulations. And fishermen uh, agree that illegal fishing is still carried out. And they, their main reason, they, they're quite frank. They say nobody is uh, looking to see if they are fishing or not, so why don't we do it? They, if they get a fine, it still will be very much less than what they would get from selling the fish, especially sharks. So uh, uh, here, uh, the opportunity costs, so they, 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 they're willing to take the risk. They do it, and they agree to this. And uh, the, from the, not the shark fishermen, but the tuna fishermen mainly, they also agree that because of the decline in shark populations, they have noticed a decline in bait and even reef fishing itself. So uh, they, their theory is these fish, these fish uh, they are coming to the reefs to find shelter to hide from these large predator fish. So with, with the uh, uh, sharks gone, there's no more threat, no more need to come for protection. So this is a theory by you know, the fishermen, and I spoke with uh, some marine biologists and this, uh, and they also said fishermen have reported this and similar other studies also show that fishermen report such incidences. So as um, uh, can be uh, observed, uh, there is conflict between resource users. Now we have the main users is the fishermen and the diving schools where the, the tourists come to dive at the Galiha. And I found that the main, uh, a lot of the reason for the conflicts was uh, due to a lack of information about the Galiha, about the status of its protection. So first, fishermen, they did not have enough information uh, when I inquired uh, with the fishermen, they don't know. Some of them are not sure if the Galiha is protected or not. And uh, they're not sure if there are other protected areas in the atoll or not. So, and, and they don't, 
they're not fully aware of the prescriptions for the marine protected area. What can they do? What is forbidden? All, all this is, uh, uh, and uh, the process usually for establishment of a marine protected area is uh, from the ministry I inquired, and they announced for three days over TV, radio, and newspapers, and they sent uh, the uh, announcements to the atoll officers and the island officers and uh, so this is the process but once this three days is gone there's no uh, reminding or so it's j done and th th this is mainly I think because there's nobody to manage and take care of it it's just something that's done and you can keep it away hidden uh, so um, even when I asked school children, this, there was I was surprised at the knowledge, little knowledge they had. Many children, did, students didn't know there was a protected area in Bay at all. So there, there, so I found there is an issue with uh, information uh, like this. So uh, coming back to the amount of knowledge fishermen knew. Uh, if they did, if they were not sure which uh, area, which reefs were protected and which weren't, once the dive school people say, "Look, this is a protected area. You can you can't fish from here." They're not sure, so they can't uh, um, say, "No, we have a right to fish here." Uh, and the fishermen apparently said uh, the tourists, uh, uh, the dive school boards have actually ask them to leave from other reefs which were not protected as well. But they can't argue against this because then they don't have the knowledge to say, look, this is not a protected area. We have a right to be here. And similarly, from the dive schools, I found they also did not have sufficient information. For example, they thought all fishing was uh, prohibited. But uh, in the prescription, traditional bait fishing is so even when fishermen are doing bait fishing the, from the dive schools, they think they're doing an illegal activity and they will ask them to leave. So there is this uh, lot of, um, uh, generally I found awareness is something very key that need to be addressed uh, for management. And surprisingly, a common uh, thing I found from both groups, the dive schools and the fishermen I talked to, they didn't like this illegal shark fishing in the atoll. It was bad for the tuna fishermen as well, and it's bad for the uh, di dive schools as well. But uh, uh, th this lack of communication uh, barrier, I think this conflict has been ongoing. They couldn't find the common ground. So th there's a potential for them to work together. Now these findings, as I've said, are from two, between, uh, taken between 2006 and 2007. Now since uh, the Biosphere Reserve has been established, I'm hoping that things had been improved there in the Galiha, but as far as other marine protected areas, I'm very sure the, these, are, these findings are still, uh, probably this, this is the case even now uh, in, so though this is research has been done some time back, it, many of the findings would still be valid now. So as uh, f going from the co consultations to the improved management, so awareness was a key thing I wanted to be to address. Uh, setting up inf enforcement mechanism. Uh, was something I wanted to look at, minimizing damage to the reef area, monitoring and research for changes in the health of the reef, and improving community participation. So that's uh, the areas I wanted to address. And the estimated cost I got for 2006 figures was over 173,000 US dollars to implement this uh, improved management. And that's, I don't know if you can read from, uh, but this is the very nitty gritty details of uh, the proposed management. I'll just explain, uh, here there are the components of awareness monitoring and uh, as I described earlier, monitoring of FOI. So th this is the component and this is to be implemented by a unit in Bayatol. When they would work together with 
uh, the ministry and from the ministry side the protected areas management unit and legal division will be they will be working so the work the role for the ministry is first to establish the policies and the mechanisms uh, for the penalties so uh, for enforcement there need to be ways that people people can be fined and this need to be uh, uh, re uh, reasonable ones where the fine is, if the fine is so small, people still continue the illegal activity. And this was something coming from the fishermen as well. I discussed with them on how to improve the management. And this uh, management, the proposed improved management is based on consultations from the local stakeholders. And the fishermen di did tell me that uh, the, that it's very important to have fines which are quite high and that's the way that people will stop illegal shark fishing or other activities the fines need to be higher so these things need to be set up by the policy side and even to establish uh, the actual enforcement unit in biotol it's the i thought it's the job of the ministry to establish the unit, train people, and ensure that uh, trained people are there. And uh, also fund, finding uh, funds, funding mechanisms. So uh, th that's the proposed improvement scenario. As I said earlier, that's the calculated price of implementing.